Hello, it's Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome to my latest video. Today I thought I'd share the process I go through when I'm trying to come up with ideas for how I want to create and document. And it's one of the questions I get asked the most is when you sit down, where do your ideas come from and how do you get started? So one of the first things I tend to do is try and decide the colours that I want to use in my journal spread because that helps to kind of focus me a little bit more than just looking at all of my supplies and all of the options out there. And often I will use a colour wheel and just kind of decide which ones I want to work with. So in, I think it was on Patreon, this week, I think it was, I shared it from some journal prompts I set earlier in the month was to create some pages using blue and green as the main colours. So that's something I'll often do is just look for which colours I really want to work with. And today I've decided that I'd actually like to go for some colours that are opposite each other rather than next to each other on the colour wheel. And I'm going to go for green and pink. And that helps me straight away because I can then start looking through my supplies at things like my washi tapes and my ink pads. I might use some stickers as well. So I've looked out for some of my pink and green floral and leafy stickers. I've got some little cards here which I might use, a green pen, postage stamps. So that helps me to just get a few supplies close at hand rather than just sitting there kind of looking at everything and not sure where to start. So that's my kind of first tip is pick which colours you want to work with and try out different ones, different combinations each time. And then you'll soon get a feel for which colours you really like working with. And the other thing, sometimes I already know exactly what I want to write about, but other times I kind of know that I'm in the mood for doing some journaling, but perhaps don't quite know what I want to write about. If you've got my new book at the back of every chapter, I've written out lots of writing prompts. So if you do have this, I'd suggest just having a flick through, reading a couple of them, and perhaps just picking a prompt that really speaks to you at the moment. So the one I think I'm going to focus on today is how good are you at treating yourself kindly? Because that's something that's been on my mind quite a lot at the moment and something that I'm really actively working on. So I think that's the prompt that I'm going to work on. There's also tons of prompts on places like uh, Pinterest as well that you could have a look through. But I think it's a really good starting point. Once you've got your colours and a topic that you want to write about, it usually really helps you to get started. The journal that I'm going to be using, I've got a standard size traveller's notebook insert, which I keep inside this vintage light -like cover from Start Bay Notebooks. The insert that I'm going to be using um, has plain paper in it and it's a Tomo river paper insert and that tends to lend itself quite well to watercolour and all kinds of other mediums. So that's what I'll be working in today. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that one of the first things I often do is put some washi tape on my pages. And I really feel that helps to immediately just break up some of that white space a little bit and also can get you started with the colours that you're wanting to use. So I think I'm going to pick those two. I'll see how they look together because they're both quite busy. I might be better off going with something plainer, but I'm going to have a look. And I'm just going to run initially one of the, the green tapes down each side and then probably tear the pink tape and add some of that on top. So one of the things that I always think with journaling is that you don't really want to get too hung up on anything about sort of perfection with your journals. I have plenty of pages that I'm really not that happy with the overall look of them. 
but it will have done something for me that day. That time that I sat down, took some time to create and also I'll have probably learned something from it. If I don't like the look of those journal pages, then I'll know not to do that again. So these washi tapes that I'm using are from London Gifties. And because I didn't want it to look too, too busy with those tapes together, I've actually just torn the pink tape along the middle and I'm laying it on top so you've got a hint of that pink coming through without it kind of really overwhelming the green pattern. The next thing I'm going to do, again to help break up this space, is add some collaged pieces to my pages. So I know in, I think it was this pad, it's predominantly blue, but I seem to remember there's some green sheets in here as well. So I'm probably going to use those and then lots of other kind of neutral tones so anything from old book pages is always great for this because you know it's going to work well really with any of the colours you've chosen. So I'm just going to start tearing some of them up, placing them on my page. I'm probably going to do a cluster here and here. And once I'm happy with how they're looking I always mark in pencil just where the corners are so that I can place them back down and the glue that I'll be using is Pritt Stick and I find that it works really well for kind of your light collage papers. So one of the things I try to do with something like this is really not overthink it too much because I think you can spend a long time deciding whether things are precisely where you want them and that can actually take a little bit of the fun out of it if you're not careful. So I think just try and have as much fun with it as possible. One of the things I do tend to do is just stand back a little bit. So I just stood up a minute ago just to see if I was happy with how everything was looking. And then I'm just going to get gluing because if it doesn't look balanced I can always add some other things on top. I've just tried to make sure that at least a little bit of each of the papers was still visible once I've uh, put them all together. Okay, so I'm really happy with how that cluster's looking and I've got some of the green in there, but I also want to make sure that I bring in some pink as well. And I'd quite like to go for a reasonably light shade of pink. I think what I might do is use one of these pressed flower stickers. And these are really handy actually because they're transparent so you can kind of have a look to see how you think they're going to look there. So I really like this big one here and again these stickers came from London Gifties and as always I'll try and remember to leave everything that I've used linked in the description box down below. So I'm really happy with that, that's layering across quite a few of the pieces of paper. And another thing I might do is just add a little strip of washi tape 
fact, I might use this pink one again. Just tear it along the middle and just add it somewhere, just so you've got a little bit of hint of that coming through as well. So that's my first cluster done and then I'm going to go through and do something probably quite similar up here as well. With this collage cluster up here, because it's already got quite a large focal point on it, on the green paper, it's got that lovely fountain pen nib on it. I don't really want to detract from that too much by adding a big flower, but on this washi tape, I've got a really lovely, delicate pink floral there. So I think I'm gonna add this one on top. This tape has a peel off backing, which is really handy because you can kind of cut around them, use them like stickers. And again, the same as the flowers I used, it's completely transparent, the actual tape itself. And I think I might just I'm going to trim off around the edges of this. and then just have that coming out of the bottom a little bit. So I've still got that hint of pink coming through there along with the washi tape, but it doesn't take away from the image that's already there. So then the final thing I think I'm gonna do for some decoration is possibly add a little bit of stamping just on the collage itself. And I did get out my pink and green stamps, but I think I've got more than enough of those colours now. So I'm just going to use this Versa Magic Sahara Sand stamp, which is a nice brown, so that I've got some hopefully nice reasonably subtle stamping on there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that coming over the side. It's another great way of just breaking up a little bit of that white space. And then I'm gonna use this one along the bottom. And if you stamp over a couple of the papers, if you're going on top, that looks quite nice because again, it makes it look like it's kind of designed to be there. So that's really most of the decorative stuff done. I think I'll see how I feel once I get writing. But I hope that helps to show you that it really doesn't have to be too hard to get something lovely and decorative. And already to me, this feels much easier now to write on because I've got much less space to worry about, but still loads of you know, kind of room to be able to write down some of my thoughts and feelings, but I'm not just confronted with those blank pages. For my date, I'm going to use a Tombow Fudenosuke brush pen with a firm nib. One of the things I find really handy is using an underlay board or a thick piece of card so that you've got a slightly flatter surface to work on. I don't have many pages in this journal left and you'll find that all the pages on your left hand side can get quite bulky so that's a nice way of just giving you a flatter surface to work on. And for my journal writing itself I'm going to be using this Twisby 580 
AL, I believe, in pink, rose pink, that came from Colt Pens, and I use an extra fine nib. So the prompt that I'd picked was, how kindly am I treating myself? So I'm gonna write about some of the things that I've been doing recently to try and look after myself a little bit better, but also perhaps then when I get to this page, start thinking about the other things that I could improve on. On this page so far, so what I've written about is that I've started making a much better effort to treat myself kindly, both physically and mentally. I regularly check in on my self-talk so I can stop any criticism and negativity quickly. And I've also started bringing yoga into my daily routine and I bought myself a new yoga mat, a nice thick one. And I started, I've tried to pick the same time every day now that I do yoga because I know it's the first thing I drop is looking after myself physically when I'm busy or feeling under pressure. So I'm trying to pick the same time every single day so that it really becomes a part of my routine and I'm doing it just before lunch. And I think that then sending a much better kind of mental signal to myself about what I eat at lunchtime because if I've just invested that time in doing yoga and looking after my body I don't I'm less likely to eat unhealthy foods so I started doing uh, the yoga with Adrienne 30 day challenge one of her the one from this year so that's definitely one of the things I'm trying to do to make sure that I'm looking after myself so on this page, this is another one of my tips. If you've got collage, it can be quite difficult. If you're writing this way, you're gonna have that empty space there. If you turn your page around this way, for one, I think it looks visually really interesting to have your writing in two different directions, but also means you can make good use of all this space as well. So I think I'm gonna use these pages to write about some other things that I've kind of got in mind that I'd like to do for myself so that I can keep my energy levels up and you know, I think it will just make me a better person if I'm treating myself much more kindly. So that's what I'm gonna write about here. So I've now finished the writing on this page and one of the things that I've got in mind is that I'd really like to introduce for myself a monthly nature date. So I get outside and walk our little dog Barney every single day but it's usually something that I sort of you know, need to make sure I get done before I'm starting work but I want to make sure that I'm taking a whole day out and just being surrounded by either the woodlands or the sea and making the most of where we live. And I know the way my routine works at the moment, the last couple of weeks of the month tend to be my busiest because I'm working on my Patreon printables and Patreon video. But the first couple of weeks, I've got a little bit of breathing space usually. So I want to start scheduling that in. And that's one of the things I find really helpful about journaling is it forces me to just take a moment and see what's feeling right and what's kind of maybe a little bit amiss and taking some time to write about that in my journal and perhaps make a commitment to myself. So those are my finished pages. I really hope you've enjoyed 
seeing how I break it down from the creative process to coming up with ideas for things to write about and how I use my journals. And if you decide to recreate or use any of the ideas and you share your journal pages on Instagram, then please do tag me in the photo itself so that I can see what you're up to. I absolutely love seeing other people's journal pages and sharing them up in my Instagram stories. So please do let me know. Thank you ever so much for watching. And as always, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. I hope you're all doing really, really well. And I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.